This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. I'm going to explain how you can navigate around inside the Encore workspace. And to do that, I want you to open up an Encore project. So start up Encore the way you normally would. You get the splash screen that you've seen before if you watched the previous tutorial. And this time, there is a project inside the Recent Projects list. That's only in my case. It shouldn't be in your case. It's here because I just worked on this project. So it shows up here. And I could just click on this, and that would open it up. But that's not what's going to work for you. So I want you to go down to Open Project and click on that. And then navigate to the Working Files folder, Encore Project subfolder. Now this is something we're going to do a few dozen times in the upcoming tutorial. So I want to make sure you get used to this concept of going to the Working Files folder and then to the Encore Project subfolder. And then I'm going to have several projects here as we go forward. This is the project I want you to open up now, though. It's called 0204 Navigating. You can either click on it and click Open or simply double click it. And that opens up the project here inside Encore. I want you to open up a project like this because it's a little more intuitive to tour a workspace when you've got all these things open in front of you. Now, my workspace might look different than yours because I'm working inside a lower resolution than might be normal to work in Encore. My resolution is 1280 by 720. We do that here at Infinite Skills to make our videos look a little bit sharper, make the text look a little bit sharper. But you're probably working in something like a higher resolution, maybe HD, like 1920 by 1080. At any rate, we'll look similar, and I think you can get a feel for my workspace relative to yours, and there shouldn't be any issue about navigating around inside it. Now, since you've probably worked in Premiere, since Encore ships only with Premiere, some of this stuff will look very familiar. We'll start off by looking at the project panel. This is where the links to your assets reside, along with a few other things that are unique to Encore. Here are those assets, in this case, these video and audio files. And also I have assets here in the slideshow, all these image files. After I bring these assets in, I convert them to Encore Elements, or DVD Elements. So I convert them to Timelines. So here are the timelines in this folder. And these folders are not created automatically. I created them by going down to this new item icon and choosing Folder. And here we have the slideshow with the slideshow we created plus all the various images. And then these are menus we created here inside this folder, along with an image that appears inside one of the menus. So that's the arrangement here inside the Project panel. There's some other tabs here that you wouldn't see inside Premiere Pro. You've got menus here. Here they are inside the project panel, but you also have a separate menus panel because there are some features when you work with menus inside the menus panel that you wouldn't have those features available inside the project panel, such as accessing buttons directly here. You also have access to timelines here in the timelines panel. Also properties here inside the timelines panel, for example, that you wouldn't have over here inside the project panel when you look at timelines here. Finally, you've got this build panel, which is the last step in the DVD creation when you check your project and then go on to build a DVD, a Blu-ray, or a Flash project. Over here are your viewers. You have the menu viewer. You have a drop-down list to show all of your menus, so you can switch back and forth amongst all the various menus. You also have a monitor where you can view your timelines or your slideshow. So for example, here's the slideshow. This slideshow is forward here. We can watch the slideshow by just clicking on this button. like so, or we can look at the video by scrolling here and double clicking on video, and that'll open up here inside the monitor as well. There you go. As a reminder, we're looking at some beautiful images provided to us by Digital Juice. Moving along to the right here, we've got a flowchart. The flowchart shows the basic layout of this DVD project. This is a very basic project with just a couple of menus and a few video assets. Over to the right, we have the Properties panel. Anything that's selected will show up inside the Properties panel. So I have the disk selected, so these are properties for the disk. If I click on a menu, then the properties for the menu show up here, and there's sort of sub-tabs here as well. We also have a character panel, which you use when you edit text inside a menu. And then there's metadata that says something about each of the files. If I were to select a file down here, for example, then the metadata shows up over here. Back to Properties. So down here are the timelines in the slideshow. As I look at more timelines, if I double click on them, they'll open up here as separate tabs, like that, as well as the slideshow. And the slideshow has all the slides there. Little icons mean that there are transitions. The little FX means there is a zoom or a pan there, and there's the audio associated with the slideshow. Farther to the right, we've got three more panels, library styles and layers. Library has all the assets, all the templates that you can use to create menus and all the various assets that you can use to create menus from scratch or change elements inside a menu. 
and there's styles, which are things that you can apply to elements inside there to change their appearance. Finally, down here in this frame, there's the Layers panel, which is empty now, but all we need to do is click on a menu, and that'll populate it. This Layer panel mimics what you would see if you were to open up this menu inside Photoshop. All menus in Encore are Photoshop files, and the Layers panel has the same layer structure that you would see in the Layers panel inside Photoshop. You can open up these guys and see their other layers down inside here. You might notice that there's a naming convention here, a little plus signs, exclamation point, equal signs, that kind of stuff. These things are all indications of what these guys are, what kind of elements these are inside a menu, like what kind of button they are. Finally, there are other workspaces besides this default workspace. And the way that you access workspaces up here, by clicking on this drop-down list, you'll see there are other kinds of workspaces that were designed by the Adobe engineers to suit the purpose that you're working on at that particular moment. But basically, this layout is fine, and if you make a change, there won't be any dramatic differences. If I just change the slideshow editing, you just see that it opens up the slideshow. Not that different. And there aren't that many other panels besides the ones you see here. Only a couple other ones besides all the ones that are showing here right now. And the thing is, you can customize your workspace. You can change the size of the panels, the arrangement of them, which ones are visible, which ones are not. And I explain how you customize your workspace in the next tutorial.